This is a 25 years old female who had complaints of palpitations for the past three months and these palpitations were quite troublesome for this lady. Now let's look at the ECG for this lady. So this is the ECG done while she was not having these complaints. So what we can see on the ECG? First of all, we need to see that is this a sinus rhythm or some other thing going on? First of all, we need to identify the P waves. So this looks to be a sinus rhythm. Look at the morphology of the P wave. So it is upright in 1, 2, 3, AVL, AVF and inverted in AVR and it is positive in the chest leads as well. So based on this ECG and P wave morphology, we can say that this is the sinus P waves, although this is a tachycardia. But now what is the important and interesting thing in the ECG? So I have zoomed in the important findings for this patient. Now on the left hand side, we can see the arrow is pointing towards that finding. And this is a short PR interval. So look at the leads. So P is just kind of finishing and the QRS is starting. So this is a short PR interval. On the right hand side, look at the PR interval over here. So this appears to be a normal PR interval. And the P wave is classically separate from the QRS complex. This is not the case over here. So what's the reason for that? Now the main question arises, the PR interval is short. So is it a possibility of having a WPW syndrome? The commonly known accessory pathway which causes palpitations and we need to do ablations for that. So is there a accessory pathway present or not? So there are criteria that are being met for a WPW except for a delta wave. So here you can see the blue arrow is showing the patient who is having a typical WPW or accessory pathway. The PR is short. There is this slurring or delta wave which is absent over here. So what's the reason behind that? Is there something else going on? Now, there is a terminology which is called uh, LGL, or long genome levine syndrome. This is a syndrome in which there is a short PR interval, but there is no accessory pathway. So these are the features which you need to see when diagnosing this syndrome. So the P waves has to be sinus. So we have seen that in the previous ECG that the P waves were in the form of an upright in inferior and chest leads and inverted in AVR and all these features are suggestive of a sinus P wave. The PR should be short. That is less than 120 milliseconds. The QRS duration also should not be prolonged. It should be within normal limits and less than 120 millisecond and there should be no delta wave. So this is the main discriminating point of LGL from the WBW, which is more common. Now, what's the pathophysiology behind this? So this is very interesting. So we have to see how the conduction system works. So now we have to see, first of all, the, how the conduction goes in the normal conduction system. So the sinus node fires, it gives conduction to the AV node and then it goes down penetrating the membranous septum and goes into the muscular septum and produces a his. So his is a region over here in the septum and the AV node is behind that. So now in a case of LGL syndrome, what happens is that we can see that there is a bypass track present, but it is not the bypass track just like a WW because 
in WW, the bypass tract is bypassing from here into this ventricular myocardium. So the ventricular myocardium connection with this area is will be a WPW syndrome. But in the case of LGL, there is a connection between this area behind the AV node and into directly the his Purkinje system. So it bypasses the AV node. It bypasses the time it has to stay at the AV node. So that's why the PR interval will be shorter because it's bypassing the AV node area. So decreasing the amount of time for that conduction. And since it is not conducting through this area and into the ventricular myocardium, it is directly inserting into the his Purkinje system, which is a fast conducting fibers. The PR interval will be short, but there will be no delta wave. So that is a difference between these two pathways and this we need to identify because LGL syndrome is associated with tachycardia and tachyridnia. So we should be wary of that. So this is uh, the difference between the LGL and the WPW syndrome, although these both are accessory pathway, but LGL is rarely seen in practice, although it is an anatomical entity and we shall be knowing of these pathophysiology.